um, the beginning of chapter 12 on trigonometry, you are going to be introduced to the trigonometric ratios. So trig is ratios. That's why we follow it up after chapter 11 and learning about ratios. And we are going to study sine, cosine, and tangent. Those three trigonometry ratios. So first of all, you need to understand when and where you are going to use these trig functions. So. The first thing that I want you to remember is that you're going to use these with right triangles. Okay, you will use these ratios to help you solve for a missing side or possibly an angle. So right now, up to this point, you have used um, Pythagorean theorem to solve for missing links on right triangles. So what's going to be the difference? Why would you use a trig function instead of Pythagorean theorem? So Pythagorean theorem, which you've used quite a bit this year, to solve for missing side of a right triangle, it will be used when two of the three sides are given. So you will use a trig ratio trig when one angle, one of the acute angles is given, or one of the three side lengths is given. So first thing you want to do is look at your right triangle that you're given to start with and see what information is given. Do I have two out of the three sides and I should use Pythagorean theorem? Do I just have one side? Then I'm going to use trig. And then once you decide that you're going to use trig, you need to pick which of these three trig functions that you're going to use. They are called sine, cosine, and tangent. You will abbreviate them S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N. So the sine of angle A is what this means, equals the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So you want to find angle A. Here's angle A. Sine is the opposite of whichever angle you're referring to. Opposite the angle over the hypotenuse. So in this case, that's length A over C. If we say sine of angle B, then here's angle B here. The side opposite is B, and the hypotenuse is C. C is the length that stays consistent. It's the hypotenuse is always going to be hypotenuse. Depending on if you're looking at angle A or angle B, does it depend on which side is opposite and which side is adjacent? So the side of angle B will be B over C. Okay? Cosine's relationship is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of angle A is this length B over C because adjacent to angle A is that side B. So if we do cosine of angle B, we're looking up here at this angle, adjacent is A, and the hypotenuse is C. 
Then tangent of angle A, tangent is the relationship of opposite over adjacent. So the opposite of angle A is the length A, and the adjacent is B. If we look at angle B, opposite angle B is the length B, adjacent is A. Now, how are you going to remember that? You maybe have seen Sakatoa. This is just an acronym to help you remember your trig relationships. So sine is the sine opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the side opposite over adjacent. You do need to memorize these because you will be using your trig functions in every math class that you take from here on out. So, Sakatoa will help you remember which trig relationship that you're looking for. Okay. So, in addition to setting up these ratios, you're just going to be solving different problems. Okay? So, on your calculator, if you can pull up your graphing calculator, you have the trig buttons on your calculator, the trig functions. Now, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you are in degree mode. So if it says radians, radians is something that you'll talk about again um, in pre-calculus for sure and possibly some in algebra two. But you want to go down and highlight degree, hit enter, so your calculator is in degree mode. Now you see these, the trig buttons, sine, cosine, and tangent. So if you want to know sine of 20 degrees, you type in sine of 20, and of course it gives you the ratio in decimal form. So if it's possible to put it in a fraction, you can put it in a fraction like sine of 30. You can math bracket, of course you know that that's one half. So the sine of 30 degrees of opposite over hypotenuse, the side opposite would be one and the hypotenuse would be two. But you can type any trig degree in and get the ratio. The ratio may be in decimal form. Okay, so be familiar with those buttons on your calculator. Another thing that I want to talk about, here's your calculator button um, shown on the slide here. Um, another thing I want to talk about is if you are going to solve for an angle. So, if you notice, above your sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, there are inverse buttons. Inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. You will see them written out in your textbook with the word arc. Okay, on your calculator, Be 
these are what the buttons look like. So, I hope you remember from Algebra 1 what it means to be an inverse. The inverse function of any function, not just your trig functions, means you flip-flop where your x and y coordinates are. So, if I have sine of an angle equals a half, I know the ratio. What I don't know is the angle. So if I'm solving for the angle, that means I want to flip-flop the place of these two things. So if I flip-flop where a and a half are, so I write it as sine of a half equals a. In order to do that with your trig function, you flip-flop them, but then you say it's the inverse sine of a half equals a. So to solve for an angle, you are going to use your inverse button. So if I go back to my calculator to solve this problem, I will do second sign button. Notice the inverse pops up. And then I'm going to type in a half, and it gives me that degree of 30 degrees. Those are the two things that you need to look at when you set up your problem. Are you looking for a side length, which means you will just use sine, cosine, or tangent. If you are looking for an angle, a degree of an angle, you will use inverse sine, cosine, or tangent. So please remember that. Okay, so now let's look at what a problem is going to look like when you're going to need to use your trig functions. Here's um, a problem. Find the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle if an acute angle measures 20 degrees and the leg opposite the angle measures 410 feet. So you want to draw a picture. Find the length of the hypotenuse. So I'm going to put my X right there on the hypotenuse. That's what I'm looking for. An acute angle measures 20. Now, I could put it up at the top acute angle or the bottom. It doesn't matter because it's your picture. We just know that one measures 20. And we want to know the leg opposite the angle, or we know the angle opposite of 20 degrees measures 410. So we only have one side length, so we cannot use Pythagorean theorem. We do know an angle measure. So which trig function do you use opposite over hypotenuse? So let's think of Sakatoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I write my problem. Sine of 20 degrees equals, I don't know why I put degrees up there on my 410. It's feet. 410 feet. So, sine of 20 degrees equals 410 over x. To solve that, I am going to cross multiply. So, x times sine of 20 degrees equals 410. x equals 410 divided by sine of 20 degrees. So, I go to my calculator. I type in 410 divided by sine of 20 degrees. Apologies, Ms. Montero's office, please. Brian Craven, Olivia Fishback, Jesse Clues, Lucy O'Daniel, Wynn Tenney, Lucy Allen, Lucy Cunningham, Ellie Bernard, Will Talley, Sarah Skinner. Thank you. So our answer, um, rounded to the nearest foot, is 1,100 and 99. So approximately 1,199 feet is our answer. Okay, let's look at one more example. A right triangle has legs of lengths 8 and 15. Find the measure of the angle opposite the 8 inch leg. So again, I want to draw a picture. It has lengths 8 
and 15, the hypotenuse, since I know we can find it if we wanted to, find the measure of the angle opposite the 8 inch leg. So there's the angle that I'm looking for. So in reference to this angle, I have the opposite side and the adjacent side. So think of Sakatoa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I am going to use the trig function of tangent. X degrees, I don't know what X is, but I know that it's equal to X over 15. In this case, I am looking for an angle. So that means I want to flip flop the places. Oh, Dr. Rose, Ms. Hayden, also Selecta. Also, Dr. Edwards period D class report to Mrs. Wheeler's room. But when I flip flop Dr. Edwards period D class report to Mrs. Wheeler's room. I have to use the time. inverse button. So I flip flop the places of those two. I've applied the inverse button. So now I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to say inverse tangent of 8 divided by 15, and I'm going to get my degree measure of tw approximately 28 degrees if they want you to round it. So I look at my um, solution here. They have rounded it to 28 degrees. And that is what you were going to use for your trick. Olivia Fish back in Wind Tank in Ms. Quintero's office, please. Now that you've watched the videos and taken some notes, I want you to do these 14 problems. And this is, will be checked in class tomorrow. We'll see you then.